But when things don't go to plan, mm. as a flight attendant, that's when it can get stressful. You know, mm. emergency situations, like if there's a fire on board, if you've got a difficult passenger, yeah. you've got a medical, you've got a passenger that has to be restrained for whatever reason. So resilience is so important for us to be able to deal with that. And we were talking yesterday about um, some of the projects that we're doing um, on the side from, from, our, from our normal day job. And uh, Laura's come around and we're going to talk about it because um, I'm quite excited to find out some more about what she's doing with her new business. Mm -hmm. So it's called um, Sky High Wellbeing. How did that come about? So yeah, where do I start? Honestly, if I'd start from the beginning, I suppose the best way. So about a year and a half ago, I got a dental implant and I had to have two weeks off work sick after I have, had that. And you know, there's nothing wrong with staying in bed and watching Netflix for two weeks. That's fine. Yeah, for yeah. me personally, I was like, what can I do with this time that's productive? And I've been to university, I've got a, an undergrad in psychology and a master's in business psychology. Yeah. And even after becoming a flight attendant, psychology has always been an interest and a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. But I do also love flying, so I was sort of looking for a way to marry the two. It all happened very kind of organic that I just started typing this document around well-being at work and how psychology can help flight attendants think like mental health. I'm really into positive psychology and resilience. Those are two, two of my biggest passions. So I was looking at resilience. As a flight attendant, things like dealing with difficult customers or high high pressure, very stressful situations. But another one of the reasons is when I started flying long haul, I instantly loved it. You know, such an amazing job. And to go to America every week is unreal. I just I love America, so it's like amazing. But I really struggled with the sleep aspect because I'm a morning person. So for me, working a night flight is just not very pleasant. And my first night flight, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. You know, I'm going to do this job for maybe two, three months and then I'm going to quit because I just... I just want to sleep through the night and be awake during the day like a normal person. And I, be I began doing my own research around how you tackle the sleep and, you know, because you can't avoid it. You can't avoid the jet lag. You can't avoid the night flights. But it's about trying to keep yourself well and healthy so you're able to tackle it, if that makes mm. sense. I ended up with about 10 pages around mental health, sleep, diet, exercise, resilience. Mindfulness is a big one as well. I love mindfulness. So I get this document and I thought, okay, what, what next? What do I do with this document? Can I just and, ask, does, yeah. do the airlines already have anything in place like this? Like anything that supports people with mental health or specifically gives you like advice about how to manage jet lag and, and stuff like that? I'm not sure if any airlines have got entire wellbeing departments, but I do know that some airlines, they have people where their job title is wellbeing manager yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But it's counselling if you're going through struggles, if you've got, you know, something stressful happening in your yeah. life, mental yeah. health things. Then we do have that, which is incredible. You know, I said to the airline, thank you so much for providing us with this. Yeah, you know, this yeah, is really yeah. amazing. And then I thought, right, I'm going to go off and do this on my own, essentially. And that is yeah, how yeah. Sky High Wellbeing came about. Awesome. So this, is, so you've been thinking about this for a while. And it's, yeah. And what was the kind of process leading up to creating it? I mean, did you just jump straight in on it? Or did, or did you kind of think, you know, is, is this worth doing? Is this something I want to pursue? What was, mm -hmm. what was the thoughts going through your head? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's been a while, you know, when I got the dental implant, it was March, sorry, April 2018, which is what, almost exactly a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think even prior to that, I'll just give you a very brief timeline, graduated in 2012, lived in Toronto 2013, I got one of these working holiday visas, came back to the UK, kind of fell into being a flight attendant. I was applying mm -hmm. for psychology jobs, but applied to be a flight attendant, got offered the job and it was a bit oh, let, let's go for it, you know, why not? And then for the first few years, so from say 2014 till 16, I was, flight attendant was kind of all I was essentially. And then 20, 2017 came around and I thought to myself, I, I now want to get back into psychology. So I started steward, stewarding at conferences, which is amazing because you get to go to the conference, but you're a steward, so you don't need to pay because conferences can be expensive. What, what kind so, of conferences? So the one, the first one I went to, I've actually got the bag beside me. It's So I'm a member of British Psychological Society. I've been a member mm -hmm. with them for about 10 years now, since 2009. I don't know if you're familiar with Martin Seligman. He's Not kind of really. the, well, no. <laughs> he's, I think they call him the father or the godfather of positive psychology and you know he's quite famous and right, okay, yeah, to yeah. have him at the conference I was really starstruck like oh my gosh Martin Seligman it was really amazing that he was there. So yeah so 2017 you know got more into psychology and then 2018 I was like I want to actually pursue something within psychology and I wasn't sure whether I wanted a psychology job. I did actually get offered a job with a psychometrics company. And I turned that down because I was I just love flying so much and you know mm. I go with my gut instinct and for me personally I don't really want a nine to five job and that was the biggest turn off for me I just you know I love flying and I love all the freedom that it gives me and the time off and 
that's kind of how well-being is about flying in psychology and trying to yeah, put them yeah. together essentially. So you, I think it's brilliant that you've kind of mashed them together. Mm. I think it's interesting that you started off with an interest in psychology and then mm. got an opportunity to pursue that more with the psychometrics but decided it wasn't for you. It was a big decision because I remember, you know, I went, I basically, I know, I'd known the CEO of the company for a few years and I saw him at a conference and so I went for the interview and then I got offered the job and to be honest with you, you know, this is like personal stuff, I'm fine sharing it. I spent two days in kind of turmoil, like, will I, won't I, will I, won't I, like, it's such a good opportunity and it relates to my degree, you know, but I love flying and I asked my dad about it and my dad was so supportive. He said, Laura, just do what you want to do, do what make, what, what would make you happiest. And mm. I'm like, yeah. So yeah, two days I was like, oh, and then after two days I was, you know, went with my gut and my instinct and I'm like, I'm not, you know, I should be excited. If you get offered a job, you should be yeah. excited. And I just didn't feel excited. Didn't feel I'm right. like, I'm going to miss flying. And blah. So I just said, you know, a very nice email. I said, you know, I really appreciate this opportunity, but, you know, I decided to turn it down. Mm. And, you know, the CEO, I still see him at psychology events and he's such a nice guy, but. Okay. Um, what, so what do you, what's your vision for? The business like oh. i know it's early days <laughs> so it's just coming together but what would you like a vague yeah. outline of what, what would you like it to look like what's it gonna what's it gonna be oh my god it's a big question the, the honest answer is that i'm not sure you know i think at the moment and i'm not really sure how to word it but i'm just kind of doing it organically and doing what sort of comes naturally and at the moment as i mentioned in our conversation yesterday i'm putting the free content on the website yeah. putting free content on social media because I think I said I'm part of a few female entrepreneur groups mm. and I've been asking them for advice because this is the first entrepreneur entrepreneurial thing I've ever done really mm. and I, I you know I might be wrong it's all you know kind of finding my feet and going with it but I don't think I can go straight in with paid content you know I can't yeah, have people yeah. go onto the website hi this is Sky How I'll Be in, you know buy this course for 20 pounds whatever I think you need to put the free content out to get the engagement, get the followers, yeah. sort of build the momentum. Yeah. I'm focused on just putting out good content and helping people and being of service yeah. and the followers will come. But I think once I've got a bigger following and I'm more known, then it will be a case of, okay, you know, do I do e-courses that people pay for? The few, the, the ideas are coming to me now that I'm thinking about it. So I did actually, I've got a family friend back in Aberdeen and he works in occupational health. But he said you should create an app because, you know, it's all good having the training because this is back yeah. when I thought I would do it through the airline. He's like, to have it in training is amazing, but if people can have it at their fingertips, like, oh, I'm on, I think one of the biggest things about being a flight attendant is, you know, you can be on layover and you can be quite lonely because the, the best way to describe it is if you've got a normal job, you finish work at the end of the day, you go home and you're with your family. We finish work, we go to an empty hotel room. Mm. And personally, I don't mind it because I'm an introvert and I actually really enjoy the alone time. Yeah. But with this app, you know, someone can say, oh, you know, I've just had a stressful flight, I'm alone in a hotel room. I'm going to look at this app for, you know, tips on how to make myself feel happier or, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. yeah just and it's, it's like and you yeah, can, absolutely, you can like it literally in the palm of your hand. So maybe e-courses, maybe an app. I, I like the word retreat or you call them workshops, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. running those, like going, hiring out a conference room in a hotel and say, okay, so we're going to have a day about well-being and it can probably, if I'm going to, when I start doing it, I guess it'll be general kind of covering everything, but then it can, I can say, okay, now we're going to have one, like a whole day on resilience, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so like, this is so corny, excuse the pun, but the sky's the limit. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 see what happens. Um, so you mentioned resilience a couple of times. Yeah. Tell me more about that. What do you, what do you mean when you say resilience? So I'm, I'm sure you, I'm assuming most people heard of the term resilience. To be honest, like, I haven't, I've, oh, I've really? heard it, but I haven't really looked, cool. you know, read that much about it. So okay. what, how would you define it? Or I'll educate it? you. All okay. Right. American Psychological Association, they describe it as the ability to bounce back after a tough time. The way that I see being a flight attendant, if everything goes to plan, it's great, you know, it's still an amazing job, whatever. But when everything goes to plan, you know, it's fine and you've got good crew, good passengers, you know, it's it's lovely. But when things don't go to plan mm. as a flight attendant, that's when it can get stressful, you know, mm. emergency situations, like if there's a fire on board, if you've got a difficult passenger, yeah. you've got a medical, you've got a passenger that has to be restrained for whatever reason. So resilience is so important for us to be able to deal with that, basically, okay. you know. So it's not just fatigue. It's, mm, it's no. not just like long hours and not enough sleep. No. But it's actually the, it's the psychological stresses of the job mm. as well. When you've got improved mental health, that increases your resilience. So that's why yeah, it's so yeah, important. Yeah. Things like mindfulness and, you know, working to improve your mental health. That makes you more resilient. You can be in a difficult situation on board and you can go, oh gosh, oh my, oh my gosh, so stressful. Or you can say, okay, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, and you're calm and 
So mm. yeah. Well, it's even people. I think it's it is mostly a a mental thing. That sounds mm. good. So even people that do amazing physical feats, you know, like climb mountains mm. and run a hundred miles, and it's like, have you heard of David Goggins? I actually haven't. No, no, no we'll talk about him another day. Yeah. But um, yeah, that all these people that do amazing physical things say it's mostly in mind. Mm. You know, so it's it's this is what yeah. really yeah. where the okay. resilience is. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so what's next for you? Ooh. As as in like we oh talked about where are we going? <laughs> so I basically have like I'm gonna get it out actually. So I've got because this I'm very type A personality and I like to have lists. But honestly, in, in a nutshell, I guess it's about creating and finding the content, making yeah. it my own, and then putting yeah, yeah, it yeah, online yeah. and getting it out to the masses essentially. We, so we were talking about Gary Vaynerchuk, weren't we? But yes. both fan of Gary V. Do you love him? And his, yeah, he's amazing. He's on my dream board. Over. <laughs> um, so yeah, his his thing is at the moment all about content, isn't it? Mm, and that's that's yeah. what I've been thinking about and, and doing some, but think, thinking too much and doing too little. But um, yeah, putting loads of content. I think mm. I think for you, it's about. Yeah, just there's, there's loads of stuff you can put out. Isn't there? Mm, I mean, there's oh there's gosh, loads yes. of like tips and so strategies much. and stories, and even maybe even like we're doing now, like interviews with um, flight attendants who have who've been weathered, and <laughs> you know, have got stories to tell about you know yeah. what works and what doesn't that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, cool. But awesome. I think for me, I think the key is just it happens organically, you know, because. Mm -hmm. One thing that I find quite interesting, I remember I was almost nervous to create social media because I had it in my head, oh my gosh, once I create social media, there's pressure to post every single day. You, know, mm. you can't make social media and then just mm. leave it stagnant. You've got to be consistent. But posting content, it's come really easily to me. It's actually to the point where like, I'm always wanting to post yeah, content. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I think just because it's the starting stages, I'm very happy with how so I've had such a nice response initially, you know, like, I think when I posted it on Facebook, I got like 60 likes from people and people from work. Oh, this is amazing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really, you know, I, it, it's going to sound weird. Like I do this, of course, because I'm passionate about it and I want to do it not for myself. That doesn't sound right. But, you know, I'm doing it because it's something that I want to do. But when you get a nice response, it, it's kind of cherry on top, if you like. Yeah, it does. Oh, this it, is really nice. Yeah, yeah. It's it gives nice you a bit of validation as well that it's yeah. like people are interested in it and 100%. stuff like that. 100%. Because I think yeah. when I first posted it on Facebook, it was like, this was... A month ago, about a month ago, it was just a little. So it was before the website had launched, and it was mm. me in Edinburgh Airport with it. It was very, you know, Instagram like kind of closed yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was Starbucks and my laptop with Sky High while being, you know, not launched but still in the make, making it stages. And I was like, I'm just gonna give a little sneak peek of this. So I just posted it. There's no caption. There's just like emoticons, you know, like women at laptop in a plane. And the amount of people messaging me like, oh my gosh, what's this? And like, this looks amazing. Yes. Please let me know when it's launched. And it is like. Intriguing, people, people yeah, 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 yeah. It's lovely when it's like I'm passionate about it, but other people want to know about it. That's an amazing feeling. So mm. you know, I'm I'm loving it, I'm enjoying it. I'm proud of myself for going with it. But the fact that other people are going to benefit from it is yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. amazing. So, so I want to, you know, I'm making it for myself, but also to help other flight attendants ultimately. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, thanks. I look forward to following that. Yeah, for sure. All right. <laughs> cool. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs>